Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. <clears throat> Who is this darkening counsel with words lacking knowledge? Prepare yourself like a man. I will interrogate you and you will respond to me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Welcome to worship at home. <clears throat> Today, we want to talk about the Life Committee sign up, the new organization that replaced our committee structure to get the work of our church done is ready for members to sign up for all kinds of things that they're interested in doing for the good of all of us. Session members will be available after the in-person service on Sunday to answer any questions you might have and to help you select projects and tasks. At the end of the worship service, people will be asked to stay for a brief time to begin their selection. If you can't be present on Sunday, you can sign up online or you can call the church office to sign up or a sign up sheet will be in the weekly update next week and in the bulletin also next week. <clears throat> There's plans for a Burlington Sock Puppets baseball game. <clears throat> Saturday, June 10th, this event is for the whole church family and friends. The game starts at 7 p.m., but we will gather at the ballpark at 6.15 p.m. Tickets are $15, but they include all-you-can-eat hot dogs, hamburgers, grilled chicken, chips, and drinks. You may bring your ticket money to the church office or give it directly to Mandy Ely to claim your spot all money is due by Monday, July 5th. Thank you. <clears throat> it's been our practice to thank some of our members and others each week for the things they've done and continue doing to make it possible for us to come together and to worship and do the tasks that God calls us to do. Today, we thank the group of folks that provide the technical skills we need for our worship services. Thanks to Caroline Massey for managing our visuals, to Nancy Trollinger for producing the visuals and the videos, for Billy Mabin for recording our services, and to Greg Massey for setting up and maintaining the sound system, and to Danny Thompson for putting the online worship service together and uploading it for in-home worship. <clears throat> Children's Sunday School. Our first Sunday of summer was great, except the road noise made it hard for the teachers and the children to hear. So they moved locations. They will now meet on the west end of the education building. <clears throat> That's the end near the Civitan hut, the old post office and schoolhouse buildings. They'll meet at 9 a.m. You can park in the circle near the session house or in the gravel parking lot near the, between the child care center and the Civitan hut if you want to be in close. We tried this past Sunday and it was much easier to hear there than over on the other side of the church. Adult Sunday School will now meet in person in the Fellowship Hall at 11.15 a.m. Thank you to Joe Covington for leading the class in Harriet's absence. <clears throat> so now, let's silence our phones and come together to center our attention on worship. We ask you to join your voices in the responsive call to worship. The winds and the waves are no match for our God. Christ speaks peace to the chaos and calm to the storm. 
in the midst of the storm of our lives, let us calm our minds and worship God with gladness. Let us join together in worship. Take me. 
It is only by the power of God that we are able to stand against evil. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin together. O Christ, whose voice brought peace to the waves, we pray for a glimpse of your peace in our lives. When all around us has given way to chaos, ground us in your presence. When the struggle for justice seems endless and we grow tired, refresh us by your mercy. Help us to see that you are in the boat with us, even when we are certain that it is sinking. Forgive us when we doubt the power of your grace, O Lord, and make us agents of your reign. Thank you for listening, God. Amen. God has given us his word as a guide for our lives. We pray the prayer of illumination because we need his help and wisdom to understand the message for each of us. As we read and hear your word, Lord, we ask that you give us the will to pay close attention to what you say. We ask for understanding and wisdom as only you can give. Help us to carry your word with us that it may let others see you in how we follow Jesus. Amen. Job chapter 38, verse 1 through 11. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind, who is this darkening counsel with words lacking knowledge? Prepare yourself like a man. I will interrogate you and you will respond to me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you know. Who set its measurements? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring tape on it? On what were its footings sunk? Who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang in unison and all divine beings shouted, who enclosed the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, the dense clouds its wrap. When I imposed my limit for it, put on a bar and doors, and said, You may come this far, no further. Here your proud waves stop. Our gospel reading today <clears throat> comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. And this is the story of Jesus stopping a storm. Later that day, when evening came, Jesus said to them, Let's cross over to the other side of the lake. They left the crowd and took him in the boat, just as he was. Other boats followed along. Gale force winds arose and, and waves crashed the boat so that the boat was swamped. But Jesus was in the rear of the boat, sleeping on a pillow. They woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care that we're drowning? He got up and gave orders to the wind, and he said, Silence, be still. The wind settled down, and there was great calm. Jesus asked them, Why are you frightened? Don't you have any faith yet? Overcome with awe, they said to each other, Who then is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, to all the fathers out there today, happy Father's Day. I hope you've already heard from your children this weekend. 
I have a surefire way to hear from mine. I send them a text message and tell them how I plan to celebrate Father's Day. It's a not too subtle reminder. We love to hear our offspring tell us how much they love us and how they listen to the advice we give them. Now my own father told me that I should listen to any advice he gave me and then I should call my father-in-law and ask for his advice and then do whatever I thought best. I told him I thought that was really good advice. What can you remember from the long and ancient story of Job? I remember how Satan told God that Job was only faithful because he had been richly blessed. Job had a large family. He had many kinds of large herds of livestock and a very successful farm and vineyard. Satan told God that if he allowed Job to lose his wealth, and later he told him if he allowed him to lose his health, then Job would curse God. According to the story, God allowed Satan to do terrible things to Job, but Job did not lose his faith in God because he was faithful. But Job could not understand why he suffered those awful things. If you haven't ever read the full story of Job, you really should take time and, and do that. Eventually, Job's wife told Job, why don't you curse God and die? But he wouldn't do it. After long discussions with three friends who showed up to give him advice on why he was sick and what he needed to do, Job began to ask God why. Why did he lose his cattle and his other livestock? Why did his farming operation become unsuccessful? Why did he lose his children? What did Job ever do to deserve this kind of treatment? Do those questions sound familiar? Finally, God responded to Job with three questions of his own. Who are you? Where were you? Are you able? God was giving back to Job the questions that Job was asking God. God, are you really my creator? God, where were you when I needed you? God, are you able to save me? Aren't those the things that we want to know when we're in trouble? I remember one time at a family reunion back in the 70s when my cousins and I had grown up and we were starting to raise our own children. Mother and her sisters were comparing notes on their children. And I heard my Aunt Ruby say, I don't know what I've ever done that God would give me children like these. I've done the best I can, and I can't see a drop of my blood in these kids. I think all of us are quick to question God if something bad happens, but often very slow to show gratitude for the good things we experience. Those questions between God and Job tie our scriptures together. Our gospel lesson from Mark is short and familiar. Jesus and his disciples were in a boat on the Sea of Galilee and a terrible storm came up. Jesus was asleep on a cushion in the back of the boat. When the boat was almost swamped, ready to sink, they woke Jesus up and asked him, Teacher, don't you care that we're drowning? Jesus stood and spoke to the storm. Silence, be still. The wind died down, the waves flattened out, and everything was calm. Overcome with awe, they said to each other, who then is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. We have to ask ourselves, how can the disciples not know who Jesus is? After all, They've seen and heard from Jesus. After all they've done with Jesus, don't they know yet? I believe that Mark told us this story in his gospel of Jesus because 
That problem with disciples, the problem they had believing in all circumstances that Jesus was the Son of God and that he would always be able to save them. We have that same problem. We say we know that God is in charge and that we have salvation through Jesus' death on the cross and resurrection, but we want God to help us on our terms. The storms in our lives affect us right now. Therefore, the help we seek is now, not at some future time. Isn't that how we feel? When we pray for help, we need to be aware of those three questions that God asked Job. Who are you? God knows who we are, but do we consciously know who he is? God made us and placed us where we are and gave us what we have. Where were we? Were we there when God spoke the world into being? Are we able? Can we even add one second to our lives or do anything to resolve our own difficulties? Jesus' question is directly related to the problems we have. Don't you have faith yet? Isn't that the question that we need to answer? <clears throat> Job suffered greatly. He lost everything he had, including his health. But he remained faithful and righteous, and he asked God, why me? In Mark, the 12 feared that the storm would sink the boat that they were in and that they would drown. They woke Jesus and asked, don't you care? Being righteous, according to what our own ideas of righteousness is, does not bring us salvation. God sent Jesus for our salvation. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, to be in us, and to help guide us through life. The Spirit descended on the believers gathered on the day of Pentecost. We have all the help we need if we can keep from being distracted by our own fears. God calls us not to worry about what we'll eat or what we'll wear, but he calls us to look after the least of those in our midst. If we look around us, there's plenty to take our minds off of ourselves. Faith in the triune God is what we need. Even faith the size of a mustard seed. And then we should ask for what is needed and include in our prayer for God's help according to his will, not our own will. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
because God's own spirit has been given to us. And that same spirit of generosity must be given from us, reflected in what we say, what we do, and how we give. Let us do so joyfully. so that they may serve your ends. And in the process, make us all a part of the blessing you mean for the world. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. On this day, we recognize fathers, and we encourage them to show their children the way of Christ, so that the legacy of fathers might be passed down in a continuous stream of families who believe and worship our God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and allow the Holy Spirit to coax them in the direction of the lives they lead. We pray for fathers and for mothers. Lord, we pray for your church here in this place and throughout the world, as much of the world that we know follows other paths. We ask that you guide the leaders of our country and our state and even our county and the cities we live in. We pray for teachers in schools at every level that they may continue with strength and with courage. We pray that you'll nurture our children and give the teachers the directions, the guidance to nurture them that they might be able to understand issues they face and bring good decisions for their own futures. And we pray for all the people on our prayer list. We pray, Lord, for our staff of the month, Randa, for Shoko's father. We pray that he might recover from the surgeries had and improve in every way. We pray for Barry, for Jackie, for Sean, for Jack and Jean Allen, for Cindy, for Joanne and her daughter Joanna, for Malachi, for David. We pray that those affected by the coronavirus pandemic would improve, would recover, and we pray for those people who have given us vaccinations, and we pray that all that have not been vaccinated would, would preferably consider doing so. We pray for Harriet as she continues to improve at home, for Donald, for Bobby, for Terry, who has been moved to Peak Resources. We pray for Dot and for Don, for Dominic. We pray for Carol and Monty, for Harold, for Bobby and Rachel, for Rachel Thomas. And we pray for Marcia Weaver in long-term recovery and rehab. And we continue to pray for Penny and A.B., we pray for Pat and Teresa, for Nathaniel and for Clyde. And Lord, all together, we pray the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Here inside this room, we learn about God's word and what he calls us to do. Out there in the world, we do God's work according to his will. Let us go and keep our eyes and our hearts open to be able to see those who need our help and they need God's word. Amen. Get up, take heart. Jesus is still calling you. Go in peace. I will